Whether it's the planet next door or billions of light years away, there are fascinating discoveries sat around every corner in space. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three incredible astronomical discoveries. Hubble finds 10th planet slightly larger than Pluto. We know of Pluto, the now dwarf planet that was previously masquerading as a planet. So, as of 2006, our solar system features just eight planets. Despite this demotion to a dwarf planet, Pluto is not alone in this ranking, with others being found within our solar system. Perhaps most notable among these is Eris, a dwarf planet perhaps more commonly known as Xena, but earning its official name from the Greco-Roman goddess of discord and strife. It's only fitting, given the name, that there has been some contradictions and disagreements as we have tried to uncover more about the dwarf planet. Upon the initial discovery of Eris, the dwarf planet appeared to be slightly bigger than Pluto. Because of its seemingly greater size, it was joked that scientists had discovered a so-called 10th planet, which would give Eris the same temporary planetary status Pluto had once held, which would be fitting had it been truly larger. Further research into the size of Eris revealed that while it is true that the dwarf planet has a mass 27% higher than Pluto does, the volume of the planet is still smaller overall. Adding further confusion to the subject, our measurements regarding the diameter of these two dwarf planets do not reflect what we initially expected, as observations made from down here on Earth with grounded equipment suggest that Eris had a diameter of approximately 1,848.6 miles, 30% larger than the diameter of Pluto. However, the Hubble Space Telescope revealed that a more accurate number is 1,490 miles compared to Pluto's 1,422. Despite the results not being definitively conclusive, Pluto is generally considered to be the largest dwarf planet with Eris pulling in at a very close second place. Mike Brown, a planetary scientist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena, California, was on the team that discovered Eris, or Xena, back in 2005, alongside Chad Trujillo and David Rabinovitz. Their research was published in the Astrophysical Journal, and Brown explained that only the Hubble telescope would have been able to assist this discovery. He explained that, with the technology available in 2005 at least, Hubble was the only telescope that would have been able to capture a clean, visible light measurement of the actual diameter of Eris. If this research were to be conducted today, the Webb telescope may be used to carry out these observations instead. With only a few images from Hubble, the team were able to find a more accurate number to determine Eris's diameter. This information has helped to debunk the 10th planet myth and put Pluto back on top as the largest dwarf planet. But researchers did not stop there. There are several ideas and theories speculating why Eris was so deceptively large. For example, it's incredibly bright compared to its small size, making it the second most reflective object in our solar system. It has been suggested that it is so reflective because of the frost sitting on the surface of the dwarf planet, perhaps as a result of leaking methane gas or distance from the sun, freezing any atmosphere that used to be present. Eris is considered a TNO, or a trans-Neptunian object, orbiting further out from the sun than Neptune. Eris is catalogued here as 2003 UB313 and holds the title of being the largest object in space to have not received a spacecraft visitor. Finding that there is more out there than we first thought in our solar system is fascinating. Even though Eris missed out on earning the 10th planet title, it's an impressive dwarf planet taking up a good amount of space. Perhaps one day Eris will receive a visitor spacecraft and we can find out more about the frozen dwarf planet. huge nuclear explosion in space called GRB 190829A. There are some wonderful phenomena that take place in the depths of the universe, and recent observations have shown one of the brightest explosions we have ever been able to see across anywhere in the universe. 
It's believed that this is the result of a long afterglow of a gamma ray, perhaps the longest one to date. A GRB is a highly energetic explosion resulting in a huge amount of light. They have been said to be the brightest events to have taken place, second only to the Big Bang itself. These events have been observed in distant galaxies, far from our own. The radiation as a result of these is theorized to be released during supernovas at the end of the life of a star. GRBs have two separate stages that they go through. There is an initial phase that lasts for only tens of seconds. Following this, there is a long afterglow, the phase of a GRB during which these events are almost always detected. These afterglows are smoothly fading and remain visible for a long time following the initial prompt. This is what provides the bright observable effects. Observations of GRB 190829A has caused some questions, making us wonder if how we understand the production of gamma rays is right at all. These observations were made by the Higher Energy Stereoscopic System. GRB 190829A gave us a unique opportunity to study these events more closely, as GRBs are, on average, 20 billion light years away though this particular one was just 1 billion light years away, placing it close enough to make observations that we would never have been able to make before. It didn't take long for questions to arise, as the team noticed some uncanny similarities between the X-ray and gamma ray emissions. The current hypothesis to explain this is that the emission components are produced separately from one another, a process referred to as synchrotron. Whilst this explanation makes sense, our current theories deem this highly unlikely, due to a burn-off limit when these particles cool in an accelerator. Exploring Mars by Sailplane The Red Planet has been a focus of a great deal of scientific research throughout the years. From the search for evidence of Martian life to exploring the physical features of this planet, we have been investigating this planet for many lifetimes. The latest stage in this research is underway, as some new revolutionary engineering could completely change how we explore Mars. Engineers have been designing a sailplane, able to fly above the surface of Mars for several consecutive days before landing. This sailplane is intended to be motorless and is pushed forth using only the wind energy on Mars. To accompany the technology that is already keeping their eyes on Mars, engineers are working on a new piece of equipment to help us probe further within the Red Planet. A team of engineers based at the University of Arizona and research scientist Alexandra Kling from NASA's Mars Climate Modeling Center have been working on lightweight, motorless sailplanes that will be able to roam around Mars. The sailplanes will be fitted with temperature sensors, gas sensors and cameras, yet the current design suggests they will weigh only 11 pounds per plane. It was this ambitious plan that led to NASA's Ingenuity. Ingenuity has the nickname Ginny and is a small-scale robotic coaxial rotor helicopter that made it to Mars in 2020, alongside the Perseverance rover. Ingenuity clocks in at just four pounds and is the first time we have been able to have a device flown in a controlled manner on another planet. While Ingenuity is an incredible accomplishment, these new plans are far more ambitious. NASA's Ginny is able to reach 12 meters in height and can only fly for short periods. The sailplanes, however, aim to overcome these limitations by flying in directions and manners that best support the wind patterns on Mars. Wind patterns will alter and shift when they encounter physical differences such as volcanoes or canyons. These sailplanes will utilize these fluctuations, taking advantage of what is present. The sailplanes are designed to move between static, soaring, when there are enough vertical winds, or to move into dynamic soaring when horizontal wind speed increases. Typically, horizontal wind speed will increase as the height of the vehicle does, essentially meaning that the higher the altitude, the higher the horizontal wind speed. This is especially true on Mars. Being able to send these sailplanes to Mars is another problem researchers have encountered, with the current suggestion being to pack the sailplanes on a spacecraft in CubeSats, a type of research spacecraft known as a nanosatellite. An alternate suggestion would be to use a balloon-like structure to lower the sailplanes into the atmosphere. 
This research is incredibly fascinating. With this equipment, we would not only be pushing the boundaries of what we considered possible here on Earth, but also advancing our knowledge of another planet in our solar system. Proposal paper for this research project can be found published in the scientific journal Aerospace. Between new observations and advancing technology, we are only bound to continue to advance our understanding of the world, solar system and the universe that we live in. But what do you make of these incredible discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.